boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing and uh, I think today we're going to do a video about the Saudi Arabia mission <laughs> that uh, Eddie Earn's about to uh, undertake uh, I've got a lot of catching up to do and a lot of things that have happened over the weekend. I've only managed to listen to one podcast that were at Highfield Boxing, Terry Chappendarmers. He's flying solo at the moment as regards his social media input. So good luck to Terry, good friend of mine. I haven't caught up with the New Age Podfather with Martin and Andy. I don't think they did one. Um, I've got to listen to Boxing Asylum, Andy Patterson and Steve Wellings, Dave the Hater Lobeck, Rob Kelly, uh, Donny Baseball, all those guys. I will listen to that when I get home tonight. Uh, Ozzy and Smith I want on it, so I want on it this weekend, so I'm gutted, but I'll listen to that later. But getting back to the Eddie Hearn, Saudi Arabia. Operation. What I'm going to do today and for the next couple of weeks, I'm just going to try and be as professional as I can without losing my cool. And you people will notice. So I think I've tried this before, and I'm going to look at things from Eddie Hearn's point of view. Now, Eddie Hearn's job is he's a boxing promoter, so basically, he's a salesman. And his job is to generate as much money as he can for his fighters. Now, by hook or by crook, he has been delivering, hasn't he, for his fighters. The game has changed, though, at the moment. The game has changed. And we're playing for high stakes in boxing now. And everybody wants a piece of action, don't they? But uh, it is what it is. So what I've done, I've jotted a few things down. They're dirty then. I've jotted a few things down and I'm going to... What's even worse? And I'm going to uh, just mention a few things here. Snook. Right. Needed, for example, on the to wear Swift needed. Saudi Arabia. What about the UK fans that have got to travel over there now? Saudi Arabia. It isn't even the capital of Saudi Arabia. It's some backwater city, isn't it? So I'm not so sure if it's going to happen. The money apparently is there. Now the Hearns wouldn't be involved if the money wasn't there because many years ago. Back in the day, there was a show called High Noon. <clears throat> and Barry Hearn pulled the plug on this show after the weigh-in, I believe. And there were all sorts of problems for Barry down the line. And I think he ended up <clears throat> to correct all the problems. Because you've got to give Barry Hearn respect. He's never been bankrupt once, so I respect that. But how, how I heard it, to correct all the problems from that show, because a lot of people left him, didn't they? Frank Bruno, Steve Collins, a lot of them. To correct a lot of problems and issues he had from that cancellation, because it made him a laughing stock. What happened were, he had to put Herbie Hyde in a fight, in his first defence against Riddick Bob. So I'm hearing. Now... Match when we're in trouble back then, but you've got to respect Barry Hearn. He's seen off everybody in business, apart from Frank Warren, hasn't he? He's seen everybody off, and 
Frank's mainly the only one who's giving him a run for his money, isn't he? But like I've just said, I've got respect for Barry Hearn. But getting back to the what we were talking about, this show is in Saudi, and the money will be there because they will have learned from the High Noon show. If you want to Google that show, Google High Noon show Barry Hearn and read all about it. There's, there's other things you can Google as well. It's all very interesting stuff and you've got to get into boxing and understand how it works and understand things that have happened in the past to what's happening now. I mean, what we've got now is we've got Anthony Joshua grabbing the microphone after the Povetkin fight and he's saying he wants all the fights in the UK because or what it, or what it, the fight before that but after the Tacken fight he grabbed the microphone didn't he and he said the UK is where it's at I don't want the fans paying out money to come and see me well you've got to look at it like this if you go and look on social media apart from the diehards and you're always going to get diehards or are they diehards are they these bot accounts are they just double agents are they gimps are they weirdos setting up accounts and putting out fake news and fake beef and all that are these people for real I don't know but Joshua said he wanted to come back to stay in the UK or not be fighting over there and then when he got beat in New York he said he'd go back to New York to put it right see this is it you say one thing and down the line things change he said I want to fight in New York and everybody said what a guy what a guy AJ is he wants to fight in New York he wants to put it right where it went wrong then he was saying I'll fight in Mexico and all this and now nah. and then he was saying Cardiff it's got to be in England in Cardiff and now <laughs> now everybody's eating Turkish delight aren't they full of Eastern promise everybody's gone for, everybody's you know it's Arabian Nights isn't it it used to be a place down here called Arabian Nights yeah, a little bit different to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Some of the birds who worked in there were shocking. But getting back to this, we're told New York, we're told Joshua is the next coming of Ali. He's a great. What? What? How did they build it? Build it. He's a great Brit, and he, 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 he's a proper British guy, and he's even sponsored by British Airways. And Britain is best. Anthony Joshua is what drives Britain forward. He drives a Jaguar sponsored. He drives Range Rovers in convoys. He's a great British guy. But yeah. But yeah, he's at Dubai most of the time, isn't he? Living in Dubai. And now he's in Saudi Arabia for his fight after New York. So does Anthony Joshua care about the British fans? No, he doesn't. Anthony Joshua is just a tool that's employed by Eddie Hearn and his paymasters. They're the ones. They're the ones that are calling the shots. Not Anthony Joshua. He doesn't call the shots. He's a fighter. He doesn't bring any fights, that's his job. He's a hard trainer. He's a typical Robert McCracken fighter. He's an hard trainer. He's a gym rat. He goes to the gym, he trains hard, that's it. He can throw a good straight one two. That's it. As regards his defence, his footwork and his skill set. Well, He's found wanting, isn't he? But if you analyse his career, who's his best win? Who is Anthony Joshua's top three wins? Top five wins. Who's his top five wins? Vladimir, 41 year old. Vladimir Klitschko. 
18 month on Seti, that's his best win, life and death. His second best win is Alexander Povetkin. 39 year old Povetkin. That's his second best win, in my opinion. And he was a former regular champion, regular, back in the day, regular champion. He'd already been beat by Vladimir, who Joshua beat. So the guy Joshua beat, a beat Povetkin. So what Povetkin handpicked? You're damn right he was. Dylan White, Dylan White beat Joshua in amateurs, coming off a two year ban, he didn't have a long camp and he had a shoulder injury, Eddie Hearn knew about the injury, were Dylan White handpicked? You bet your bottom dollar he was, he wouldn't be handpicked now though would he? I'd make Dylan White a favourite in that fight if they fought now. Third best win for Joshua, Joseph Parker, why? Well, he had a belt, didn't he? But I had him losing against Yui Fury on points. Joseph Parker. The referee spoilt the fight. Joshua couldn't cope with his speed from early on. So what he did, he just kept it long. He used his height and reach and bored his way to a points win. In the first fight, they'd not knocked somebody out in. The referee wouldn't let Parker go to work. The referee spoilt the fight. So you've got Vladimir handpicked, Povetkin handpicked, both old men, 41, 39. The third one, Povet uh, sorry, Parker, referee spoilt the fight and he didn't look good. The skill set showed in that fight. Joshua said he wanted to get the rounds in, so did McCracken. No, he couldn't let his hands go against Parker for fear of getting caught with something coming back, a bit like Ruiz, but I'll come to that in a minute. His fourth best win. Who would you say is his fourth best win? Now we've just had the three former world champions, one an old retired one, one a regular champion, and the, and, and one who, who got a belt, the WBO Parker, but it would by default because he wouldn't have got the belt if he weren't if he didn't fight Ruiz and he beat Ruiz didn't he Parker but let's have it right everybody had Ruiz beating him and he wouldn't have had the belt the belt if he won for Tyson Fury and he not beat a champion when he fought Joshua because Ruiz won a champion it were a vacant belt but not Parker's fault good management by his team but yet again you could say Parker hand picked fell into his lap just like the Olympics where he had four wins in the Olympics four wins in the Olympics he only beat the Chinaman didn't he the other three were gifts anybody's got a problem with that you're willing to debate with me but getting back to Joshua's fourth best win you'd have to say Dylan White wouldn't you and that were life and death for a couple of rounds wasn't it Dylan White's his fourth best win now looking back and, and what Dylan's done since, that were a good win for Joshua. His fifth best win, you'd have to say Takam. But if they'd let that fight go a little bit longer with Takam, it would have been interesting. I thought the referee stopped it very, very early. It were an awful stoppage. And I think that Takam were just putting his game plan into motion. And I now believe the rumours about Joshua collapsing after that fight that he was shattered. I believe that. I can believe that. Just like he emptied tank against Vladimir, left it all in the ring and he was tired after that fight. So there are his best five wins. Vladimir, an old man, coming off a long layoff. Povetkin, a regular champion, had been beat by Vladimir. Who would he, who Joshua have beat? So, he's a favourite in that one. The third one, Parker, the referee spoiled it. And I thought Parker exposed things in Joshua. The fourth one, Dylan White. And the fifth one, Tackham. I'm not going to count Eric Molina or Brazil. Shockers, they were. Shockers. Charlie Martin, he's a former world champion, but 
you'd have to put him in in the same bracket as he's like a southpaw Dave Allen isn't he Charlie Martin Dave Allen against Charlie Martin would be a 50-50 fight probably wouldn't it well it would have been six months ago I don't think it would now I think David's finished now but other than unless he gets his act together but getting back to uh, getting back to Joshua as far as I'm concerned he's had gifts he's had gifts but going through this here let me just have a look uh, is AJ taking a risk going to Saudi yeah he is taking a risk because it's obvious that he doesn't travel but he doesn't travel well does he He doesn't travel well, so he likes the fans behind him. So he's been beat. He's been beat already, hasn't he? He's been beat already, uh, Joshua, in New York. So he's been beat in New York. So as far as I'm concerned, he doesn't travel well. He's like Clinton Woods, who was on these framed pictures in here. Clinton didn't travel very good at all. I think only guy, only time he travelled and won were in Jersey against uh, Elvik Enrique or whatever his name I've forgot now. But Clinton didn't travel good. Tarver beat him. Tarver is Cloud beat him. Roy Jones beat him. But Roy Jones beat everybody then, didn't he? But getting back to uh, Joshua, is the Saudi Arabia fight a risk? Yeah, it is. They've got a lot riding on it, haven't they? They've got there's a lot of mouths to feed around Joshua, isn't it? He's a manufactured fighter, and I feel sorry for him in a way because I think he's a game fighter. But why hasn't the Ruiz, Ruiz, Ruiz commented yet? Well, there's a press conference as we speak now, so maybe Ruiz is going to be there. Who knows? But uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look, but. It is what it is, isn't it? So let's see if Ruiz is at the press conference. But uh, is Andy Ruiz? I just put a tweet out, and some of the Porky followers will tell me at the press conference today. Is Andy Ruiz at the press conference? Let's have a look. Stig, I've asked about that in uh, there's the there's there's no there's no down mate for it. I'm not saying she ain't a nice lass or anything like that, but she's we we get uh don't take this wrong way, Stig, right, but we'd get pissed up out of us if we put a girl at 50 odd year old as a ring card girl, mate. But I wish you all the best in your new relationship, mate. Alright? But uh, we will talk later. Terrorising me, wants his girl to be a ring card girl. She might be a nice lass, but there's a lot, there's, it's, there's a lot more to it. And, uh, Do you know if Andy Ruiz was at that press conference, Claire? Because I'm in the middle of filming here, and uh, I don't, I don't know yet if he's there. I don't want to say anything in the middle of the video and look a prat. So, all right, can you let me know? Right, getting back to uh, this. Why hasn't Ruiz commented yet? Well, he might be there today and he might comment, so I might put my foot in it. But so far, he hasn't said a dicky bird all weekend and. If he isn't there at that presser today, well, I'm going to go with my theory that he's not bothered. Why Saudi Arabia and not New York or Cardiff? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Eddie Hearn is money motivated. Them people care about money, don't they? That's what, that's what they're bothered about. So... Uh, 
I really feel despondent about boxing. I'm becoming disinterested, which is bad because I love boxing. I see what I see what you mean, love. I see what you mean. Uh, I see what you mean. Oh, here we are. Let's see if he's at the press conference. Have a look. I'll just plow on, they'll tell me for years. Right, does this mean Dazone banging trouble as, re as regards funds? No, I don't think they're banging trouble. They've obviously got a lot of money to throw around, haven't they, Dazone? But I think that uh, they can't keep doing this forever, can they? But, and it's a big but, Eddie Hearn don't care. He don't care about anybody except getting money, and that's his job, isn't it? I mean, we all knock him, don't we? And I knock Eddie, but his job is to get money in, isn't it? Oh. Stig terrorising me. Uh, does this mean Dazone's banging children? Read that. Why Saudi and New York and Cardiff? Like I've just said, it's about the money. Fury vs Wilder rematch not happened yet, and I'm going to go with my initial reaction that Ruiz will be injured and Hearn will move to put Joshua in an interim fight, what do you think? Uh, that's a possibility isn't it? That Andy Ruiz don't want to fight in Saudi and that they're going to mess Eddie Hearn about. Now Eddie Hearn, he's a businessman isn't he? He will be sweating. He will know, he will know he's on a time limit. He's only got a certain window to get as much money in as he can for Anthony Joshua before the people lose interest. Now Eddie Hearn is smart enough to know and the people around him are smart enough to know that they've got to generate as much as they can now. Joshua's not turned into a Michael Jordan has he or a, a Tiger Woods, LeBron James, he's not turned into one of them has he? Why? Well, I think it's because it is manufactured, isn't it? I don't. When Joshua got. I don't see how he can move forward now and say he's the person he is. He's got to win in devastating fashion and then come out with something like. some excuse as to why he performed like that before. He's going to have to wipe floor with Ruiz. Now, six months down the line after the first fight with Ruiz, Joshua's not going to get any quicker. He's definitely not going to get any stronger. And he is definitely, definitely not a big puncher. Who has Joshua knocked out cold? Who? Who's he knocked out cold? I haven't seen him knock anybody out cold yet. It's an accumulative accumulation of punches. Now, Joshua looks the part, doesn't he? Can you text me if you see Ruiz there, please? Yeah, cheers. I've got to tell you. Where's my mouth? Uh, put this on. Michelle, do you know how to work this tablet? Right. As I was saying there, Joshua's a manufactured fighter, isn't he? He's manufactured. And what's happened is, we've had him forced fed on us. We've had Joshua... These are, this is just from memory. We've had him dressing up in the same clothes as Muhammad Ali and going to these iconic spots that Ali had had pictures took of him back in the day. Now, I think that was in bad taste, but we've had him in Dubai at the top of that hotel that's in middle of the sea, you know, it looks like a sail. Right, we've had him at top of there, in a boxing ring, doing photo shoots. There's nothing wrong with that, 
They've marketed him as somebody who knocks about with royal family of Dubai and he's had tea with Prince Harry is it? He's had an MBE, an OBE, the next one is a KB in it, a knighthood. Now that's what they're going to be pushing for Joshua. But along the line there's been things happening and there's been cover-ups what people are saying, aren't there? There's the incident with the watch, where his watch got took. There's the one regarding the, the he's got a son, hasn't he, out of wedlock. Now, if you're trying to portray somebody as Gary Lineker and then he's having a son out of wedlock, that's not good, but they covered that up, didn't they? Sky Sports never even reported on it. None, a lot of people in the boxing industry knew about it. I know for, I'm not going to mention names today because I'll get my knuckles wrapped off a of nickel, but I can tell you certain people in the boxing industry and people who were not macho and sky employees people knew that Joshua about the a few certain incidents but they didn't report on it because they want to work with Eddie Earn down the line don't they on sky and I get that I, I get that I mean there's many a time I've probably said things and messed things up for Dennis here you know with some of our lads and I know and not once as Dennis said to me What's they going to say that for? We might need to work with them down the line. Not once has he said that to me. Michelle might have said, pulled me about it. But not once has Dennis said that to me. That's why I've got respect for him. Because he, he ain't bothered about any of them, them people that want to kiss ass. Same as Clinton Woods, he wanted to kiss ass. They just got on with the business. That's why they were a good team. Went from beginning to end. Whereas Joshua, he's more, money, he's more business savvy. But he has to be, doesn't he? Because every move that he makes is scrutinised. Every single move. I mean, I've even got up this morning and people are saying that Joshua's dad isn't his dad. People on social media. That's not his dad. He's got different genetics. So, who knows? I don't want to get into stuff like that because it's personal. But, uh, who knows? But, uh... Stick, listen to me mate, I will speak to you later, alright? Jesus, Stig's on one today. Stig is pushing his girlfriend to be a ring card girl and now he wants her to walk fighters out and all that. Well, I don't get all that, I don't get all that. He's crazy. You wouldn't want, would you have your girlfriend as a ring card girl? Stick! Right, what sort of man wants his girlfriend to be a ring card girl? Have a think about that. If you're going to start carrying off like this, your girlfriend might drop you. Alright, now I'm turning my phone off now. Right, uh, So basically, Saudi Arabia. I'm not up on it to be honest, I don't think it's fair for British fans, I don't think it's fair at all. I don't think it's fair at all and I think that, uh, I think that, I think, I think if it's 1300 quid I've, I've seen prices for a ticket, hotel and flight, 1300 quid so. We've gone from, if you live in London and you're going to Wembley, 30 quid ticket, then ride up in rafters with 30 quid. Now, it's gone from 30 quid and a tube pass, or a train pass, whatever, to New York, which were like 800 quid, one it, full package, hotel, ticket and whatnot. Tickets are not that dear in New York. Your main cost is your flight, isn't it? You know, three, four hundred pounds for your flight your hotel for a couple of nights all that we're going to spend though it's a thousand pound job it's now going to be a two thousand pound job and are they going to do eighty thousand out there no they're not going to do eighty thousand what arena is it going to be at? at well we don't know do we it's all going to be on this press conference so what i'm going to do at the end of this conversation i'm going to 
to add something to end the video after Eddie's press conference. So, but what can you do? It's just one of them things, isn't it? It's uh, it's boxing, isn't it? Where's the chargers? Where's my charger? Oh, no, no good. But it is what it is, isn't it? But getting back to the Saudi Arabia thing, I think it's a bit unfair on fans, but. Maybe Eddie Earn don't trust Joshua. Maybe Eddie Earn thinks if Joshua's gonna get beat again here, he might just never be the same fighter again. He might he might disappear out of the sport. So Eddie might Eddie might think that uh, well we might as well just get paid off it if we're gonna get if we're gonna go sit well one more time. But if they beat him, isn't there a trilogy? Are they going to have a trilogy? I don't know, but what I do know is that money is the god for all of these people. Even Anthony Joshua. I mean, he's had a fair old run with press, hasn't he, Anthony Joshua? And now, but the chinks have started to appear. But they've always been there, haven't they? For example, the carjacking. Why ain't nobody reported on that? Do you know what I mean? Seven days before he fights Povetkin, they're in Battersea, and he's been carjacked. They put a knife, a machete thing straight through a window, took his watch. Now, I don't know. But, they had a son out of wedlock. The chinks have been there. He's just a kid in the front streets. He's a rough, tough kid. They've tried to mould him into this. I don't know, he must feel like he wants to scream. But the people around him, are they to blame? Well, they always seem to be hangers on around him, but there always is with Champ, isn't there? Unless you're Carl Froch and or Clinton Morris, they didn't have anybody around them. Because they're just straight talkers, aren't they? Cobra and Clinton. Robin Reed didn't have a lot of people around him. He had a lot of people ripping him off. I'm not going to go into that, but. Joshua and people like that, Tommy Earns, Aaron Pryor, Mayweather, they always seem to have hangers on. These hangers on, the, these hangers on that hang around the people who are the champ, they've all got to be fed and watered, you know. Nobody understands the expense that it comes to just to keep one person in a team. For example, Here's an example. If we put a show on in another country, Dennis has got to pay me to go out there, my flight. He's got to pay me hotel, he's got to pay me food, food on it, yeah? No, he ain't. I'll pay me home. And then nobody can say to me, are you and hanging on? But are they willing to do that? No. And they're also going to want a wage. So when you've got the guy Leon Skinner or a AKA Skins or whoever he is, he just looks like a bloke with a goatee beard and a ponytail to me who, who's lifted a few dumbbells, that's it. People like him, they don't know how to go out and get anything on their own, so what they do, they pal about with somebody. And then there's the next person comes along, he's the guy who taps Joshua on his shoulder and says, don't forget, you've just had a fight, you need to put that hat on there. Because on that hat it says, Under Armour, Anthony Joshua. Put that hat on, he'll be on probably a grand a week. Then you've got McCracken there, he'll, what will he be on? He'll be taking 10% of 35 million. He's going to want him fighting, isn't he? These trainers and people around them, they all want paying, all of them. They've all got to be paid. All of them have got to be paid. Joshua's head must feel like it's going to explode. Trust me, he'll have a lot on his plate, that kid. He probably just feels like he just wants to go to the gym to escape from everybody. He'll have people putting stuff to him all the time. 
And then you'll have Eddie, Eddie Earn there. Eddie Earn. Now, Eddie Earn, in my opinion, should have took the Wilder money, shouldn't he? But there might not have been anything in it for him. If Eddie Earn's got a deal to, for him to fight in Saudi, they'll be getting paid. He will be getting paid, sure as eggs are eggs. Eddie Earn will be getting paid. And he'll be doing this job while he's 80, Eddie. He loves himself, doesn't he? But he's a good promoter. Nobody can say that he had not delivered for Joshua. But Terry Chappendale made a good point on his podcast last night. People keep saying Joshua isn't surrounded by boxing people. Well, technically, he is surrounded by boxing people. Because he's got Robert McCracken around him. Richie Woodall. He's got people at the EIS. And he's got Barry and Eddie Hearn. They've been fetched up with boxing. Technically, they are money men. But what the point Terry's trying to make is... They put him in with Charlie Martin, didn't they, for an easy IBF win. And he knocked Charlie Martin out, didn't he? Fair enough. Well done. But, Joshua, since that win, has been learning on the job. Now, when Davian Price is knocking you out in sparring, rumours about a Coley and Dubois knocking him down... I've heard Fraser Clark's done well against him in sparring. But if you ask Fraser Clark that, he's not going to turn around and say, yeah, I dropped Joshua, because Fraser Clark is going to be turning pro next August. And he is not going to want to rock the boat, is he? He will not want to rock the boat. Same as other people, other small hall promoters in England who probably sit at home saying that Eddie is full of crap but well, they're not going to come out and say it are they? Why not? Say what you mean. They're not going to want to rock the boat. Now Dubois, he won't bother worry. Yeah I did knock him out. Well he was on his way, he won it from Team GB team. Frank Warren nipped him with an underground offer. For knocking Joshua down his bar and he must be able to fight. Now, as regards David Price, David Price were knocking everybody out at the time when he dropped Joshua, he were undefeated. So, for David Price to knock Joshua down, I heard it's, it did happen, so... And not only knocked him down, he put him out cold. Now, you've got to understand that at the time, Joshua had sparred David Price and sparred Tyson Fury, and he set about both of them. But Price dropped him, didn't he? Because he was red hot at the time. Now, so Joshua will never want to fight Price if he's been dropped by him. Because there'll be a chink in armour. Dillian White dropped him in amateurs, didn't he? There's another kid as well, another foreign kid that has dropped him in amateurs. Also, there's a sparring partner that dropped him recently. So what we've got is, we've got a guy who prepared to have a tear up, but he hasn't got the skill set. That skill set comes over time. Andy Ruiz, he's got a skill set. It comes over time, repetition work. Tyson Fury, he's got a skill set. David Price, to a certain extent, has got a skill set. The better school fighters than Joshua. But then again, Joshua managed to get a gold medal at the Olympics. But really, if it had been a different country the Olympics were in, he'd have been knocked out in first round, wouldn't he? That's the bottom line. So fighters, when they look at Joshua's record, they're going to say, do you know what? He fluked it at the Olympics and he was gifted a world title by Charlie Martin. He doesn't mention Caballel, does he, Joshua? Now, if I'd have had Joshua, do you know what me and Dennis would have done? I know everybody's talking about money and the big money match and rematch and blah de blah this is what they'll probably do if they lose the next one against Ruiz. Why don't they fight Caballel for European? It's a belt he's not got, right? And Caballel's a well schooled guy. Joshua needs to fight him now. Nobody mentions Caballel. We've got a European title here up for bet, up, up, going begging. 
And nobody is mentioning it. Nobody mentions Caballel. Why not? They all want to go British to world. Why is that? Because everybody wants to go the shortcut route. Now I can bet you your bottom dollar that Frank Warren is behind the scenes now moving to get a Commonwealth belt for Daniel Dubois and a European title shot. Because if Daniel Dubois can beat Caballel, he is in the mix. He's like an undefeated top, top guy. Who you could use as a gatekeeper if you want to roll the dice. But I want to know why Caballel is the most avoided fighter in the division. Hey, why isn't Joe Joyce going for Caballel? Joe Joyce is supposed to be the next big thing, isn't he? He doesn't mention Caballel's name at all. David Price doesn't mention him. Whatever happened to going British Commonwealth European world? I think I had this conversation in a Dave Allen video I did yesterday at home. Now, Dave Allen, people keep saying, what level is Dave Allen? Now, I wanted to say British level, but Dave Allen sparred Dubois, and it didn't go very good for Dave. So, and Dubois is British level, isn't he? British champion, so if Dubois is the British champion, Dave's not British level, is he? Is Dave English level? Well, Gorman and Dubois have just fought for British, haven't they? Dubois won the British fight against Gorman. So, Gorman drops back down a level now. He's not British, he's English level. Dave Allen against Gorman. You pick Gorman to win, wouldn't you? On points. So, if Dave's not English level, he's area level. Now, I clash... I, I class... Cash Alley as area level. Cash Alley. Tom Little. They are area stroke English level. Well, Dave can't, they can't be stroke Commonwealth, can they? Because Dave Allen's had two chances to win a Commonwealth belt against Lenroy Thomas, and he hasn't got a Commonwealth belt, Dave, has he? So if Dave's not British level, he's lost in a British fight, hasn't he? He's lost to a former British champion in Price. He's lost a Commonwealth two times he's had that. English, the Gorman's English level. Dave Allen's area level. So why is he putting tweets out saying he's waiting for Gassia fight in New York, America or something? The point I'm trying to make is boxing about levels. I know it's a cliche, but it is. You have to find your level. If Dave Allen beats Cash Alley, he is area level. He will then progress to English level. That's how they did it here with Clinton Woods. They went area title. The English weren't available. I think they went to British after that. Commonwealth, European and world. You find your level. You, you win a belt and you find your level. You can't just jump in with top guys. Now, point I'm making here is Joshua. He won a British title, didn't he? And a common way, beat Gary Cornish and then Dillian White, and he fair enough. But then he jumped to world level because he got an easy fight with a guy who was. Charlie Martin fluked it. He was an English level. Charlie Martin had struggled with Gorman. Nathan Gorman probably beats Charlie Martin. So Charlie Martin is English level, just. English probably stroke Commonwealth level, Charlie Martin. Joshua beat him, but then he's thrust into world title, and he? he's got a world title. Oh my God, what are we going to do now? We can't fight Wilder. People like that and Tyson Fury will get knocked out or took to school. If Joshua fought Tyson, he'd get took to school, wouldn't he? Fought Wilder, he'd get his head punched to the moon, wouldn't he? So what's Eddie going to do? Well, they go and get Eric Molina, don't they? And that... And they got Brazil, Molina. You know, Brazil, easy, Molina. They got Brazil because he went to the Olympics, but he didn't pick gloves up till he was 27, did he? Then they got, oh, he turned pro when he was 27 or something, didn't he? Then they got Molina. Why? He, he's, he's an English level guy, Molina. Stroke British, if that. They got Molina, why? He's really up for this coup, why? Because he'd been in with Wilder, so what? They used it, well, it's good enough for Wilder. 
passing the book, paying your lip service. Who else did they get? Vladimir and old man got him out of retirement. Parker. He'd not beat nobody, had it? Ref spoilt that fight. Tackham, late substitute. The list goes on and on, doesn't it? Povetkin, 39 year old, old man. He'd been beat by Vladimir. You know, the list goes on and on. Manufactured fighter, Anthony Joshua, that's what he is. A manufactured fighter. Does Eddie Earn care for the fans putting it on in Saudi? No, I don't think he does care for the fans putting it on in Saudi. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, do you see Ruiz having an interim fight? If this fight doesn't happen in Saudi, right, if it doesn't happen, right, I see Joshua fighting an interim fight because Eddie Hearn will want to get him out and get a win on board. But if Joshua has an interim fight, well, Ruiz will have it. He's got to have an interim fight, hasn't he? And we all know who Ruiz's interim fight will be, don't we? We know, don't we? It'll be wilder. And this is why I'm a bit sceptical, so I'm going to go on record. If Ruiz is not at that press conference today, I'm going to come out and say that fight doesn't happen. If Ruiz is there today at that presser, the fight will probably happen. But at the moment, I'm going to play devil's advocate and I'm going to say it doesn't happen. Glasses here, hang on a minute. To her now, it's just about the money now. He don't care for AJ or anyone except for his own family. This is boxing, not Wall Street. Yeah, I can see where, where people are coming from uh, if they think that. George Foreman. I've heard George Foreman might be getting added to Joshua's team. What, what's he going? What's he going? Who's he trained? I, 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 why is he getting involved, George Foreman? I don't, I don't get that. What, what's a bloke? What's a seventy-year-old bloke going to do for Joshua? Is he going to undermine Robert McCracken? I don't know. He's bringing George Foreman. I'm going to prove that Joshua needs help with his skills. Or is he undermining McCracken? Or are they going to push the comp? Are they going to repeat the company line that it's all about what's best for Joshua? I don't know. But what I do know is this: George Foreman fought like a mummy, so he's hardly going to turn him into Pernell Whitaker overnight, is he? Do you know what I mean? Uh, So Andy Ruiz is not at this press conference then, Killer. Is that right? What do you mean with that one regarding... Uh, in fact, I'll speak to you when I get home, yeah, because I'm filming at the moment, yeah. Alright. I can't be uh, saying too much when the camera's out, forget sometimes. Right. Will Ruiz be a one-hit wonder? Uh, no, I don't think he will actually because I hope he doesn't turn into a Buster Douglas but this is how I look at it if he is a one-hit wonder Joshua's training like a Trojan and he's doing all Jimmy Kimmel and going on all talk shows and everybody wants a piece of him that can distract you, that, that can distract you. Uh, one thing about Joshua, he's very dedicated and very driven, but he's got mouths to feed, hasn't he? But then again, he wants to be a billionaire. See, that's another thing. Joshua put a tweet out saying he wants to be a billionaire, didn't he? But yet, the, none at press were talking about that. Why ain't anybody asking him about that? I saw one journalist ask him about... Oh, uh, who was the guy that Joshua beat up? 
because he had two charges and he beat somebody up and there was a drug charge wasn't there and Joshua's reply was just some crazy shit back in the day then he got cut dead they don't want that out there they don't want the black superior race tweets or whatever they sent to Eddie Chambers uh, he's a, he said Eddie Chambers are a disgrace to the black superior race well they didn't want that out that got pushed to one side and then we had the I want to be a billionaire that got pushed away the Robert Mugabe is misunderstood that got pushed away the guy who went around putting people up against walls and machine gunning and wanting killing mass villagers ethnic cleansing whatever you want to call it it's a bit more than misunderstood but that got swept away there's the story about he'd had a child to a pole dancer that would have ruined his image so I can understand them wanting to bury that that got pushed to one side when it did come out we had Joshua walking on beach with his, with his son which is a nice picture in it but how did the Daily Mail happen to just be in Dubai it's not like you're popping down to Margate is it to see uh, Gemma Collins do you know what I mean getting out coming out at sea we, we uh, with that time when she were all in them crabs at once she or something with Margate or some or South End on Sea whatever you know tipping off the paparazzi you'd have to get the pop, proper paparazzi to get the Daily Mail just happened to be on beach next to Joshua a couple of days after he, it's come out about him with his young lad that he's got a son there's nothing wrong with that and I've heard he's a good dad well good I hope he is a good dad but it's all PR, they have to make a PR episode out of everything, don't they? A bit like this with his heavy D. His goaded Lee Frotch on social media because they're trying to get a fight up between heavy D and Lee Frotch and, and get Carl Frotch to promote it. And they're trying to get one between Shane Fury and Dillian White's brother, Dean White, because Tyson Fury and Dillian White they can help sell the fight can't they because if Shane Fury loses to Dean White in a fight a white collar Tyson Fury will want to get 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 uh, the White family back won't he he'll want to beat Dillian up so that makes that fight bigger doesn't it and Dillian's got no contract has he with Eddie and Blah de blah, but have you noticed how nobody's mentioning that now? N Dillian's got some issues with PEDs and UCARDA and all that. Nobody's mentioning that. So, it is what it is, isn't it? Everybody wants to do a Logan Paul, don't they, and KSI. And, uh, and why not? If they can get a few quid out of it and some PR, why not? But it's amazing how people are around the fact that they might get a few quid and look how they behave Lee Frotch is good enough to turn professional at heavyweight I know people right, who've turned professional at heavyweight and they've been shocking Lee Frotch would dust them inside of three rounds so Lee Frotch against that heavy D guy oh my god Lee, Lee Frotch against I don't know what his name is, is it Dean E. Kirk, e. Kirk or something? But he calls his name Dean White or Lamar Scott or Baby Ting or Luther, whatever, Luther Van Dorf, whatever his name is, him, he looks a big lump, doesn't he? Him against Lee Frost, that's a good fight for White Collar. That is a good fight. But uh, it is what it is. Stick, it's no good you sending me text messages saying you love me mate, I'm at work. Jog on until I speak to you later. And do not be putting tweets out. Tagging me and Dennis in, going on about your missus being a ring card girl. Don't do it, don't tag Dennis into any of your shit. I've told you that before, you're going to make me look bad Stig, don't do it. Alright, Dennis is too much of a gentleman to say anything to you. The same as Peter Fury is too much of a gentleman to say anything to you. Don't text Dennis's name, Stig, in any stuff like that. All right, mate, it's cringe. I've told you about it before, okay? Don't do it. Cringe. Right. right where were I? 
Let's have a look. George Foreman, we've covered him. Will Ruiz be a one-hit wonder? No, I don't think he will, but I hope I hope he is. Anyway, right, Spencer Fearon. Oh my God, we're coming to Spencer Fearon now. Let's have a look. Let me just turn this camera. Let me just turn this off and change the battery.